Welcome back to Late Night, everybody. And now our featured guest, please give a warm welcome to Janet. So for those of you who don't know, Janet is a nurse. Uh, she's been a Molina Healthcare Champion. She was a South Sound Citizen of the Year. And could you, could you tell us just a little bit more about the work that you do that's like, been involved with all those accomplish accomplishments? Uh, that work is mainly through my volunteer work. Mm -hmm. um, the, the joy of being a nurse is that you have all kinds of opportunities to volunteer. And this campus, I know, promotes volunteering and having a social conscience. Uh, so the, uh, the Sound Magazine uh, Citizen of the Year was because of the work I do with human trafficking, increasing awareness of human trafficking, specifically sex trafficking here in Pierce County. Wow. And the Molina Award was uh, specific to the work that I do with those who are experiencing homelessness in Pierce County. Wow, that's incredible. That's, yeah, please give it up for Janet. Oh, no, everybody. no, no, no applause. <laughs> there is still poverty and disease out there, so, so my work's not done. And it's, you said that the great thing about being a nurse is you can also volunteer, but like the nurses are the busiest people I know on campus. How do you find time to volunteer? Well, I'm fortunate enough to have sold my business oh, when wow. I was only 52 years old. And so everything after that point has been what I want to do. And wow. volunteering is what I want to do. Wow, that's awesome. Yes. And this is, this is very cool. You were on The Daily Show with Stuart. And could you tell us about that, why you were on there, just to give us a little context? Thanks to uh, your campus here, I was able to have a clinic for folks without insurance. Now, hopefully, everybody here, everybody that can hear my voice has insurance, because life is really hard if you have no health care insurance. Folks without health care have higher rates of chronic disease. So if you have no health care insurance and you have chronic disease, how are you going to have your, your condition taken care of? The free clinics were overburdened with folks with chronic disease coming back. Diabetes, hypertension, uh, high blood pressure, all of those things. The free clinics don't do that very well. Mm -hmm. So we started, a bunch of volunteer nurses and doctors started a free clinic here in wow. the janitor's uh, lunchroom right on campus here. Wow. And every Wednesday night, we had, we had a 15 patients, five doctors and nurses for five years until Obamacare came. An applause for Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you were saying, you were saying, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't know you meant me, I'm sorry. So basically, we, we did that for five years. Obamacare was passed. It is successful. 100% of our patients got on, on the exchange, uh, got onto uh, expanded Medicaid programs. So it was a real success. I, it was, what had happened was folks like you in, in the late night comedy world were trying to decide, okay, we've been hearing that people are losing their jobs because of Obamacare. Who is losing their job? So the Daily Show contacted the American Association of Free Clinics, who contacted the state of Washington Free Clinic. And I, I, I told everybody, I do not want to volunteer forever because there needs to be an end to our misery and suffering, right? Mm -hmm. You want to volunteer your way out of being needed. So when Obamacare was going to be successful, I told everybody we're going to close this clinic because we're going to get proper insurance and proper health care delivery systems to folks who need it. Wow. So that message got all the way back to The Daily Show. They came out and spent eight hours, eight hours right here, right, right here. They were, so the Daily Show was on campus. On campus. Wow. Yeah, they came here and, we, and after eight hours, they got five minutes of, of <laughs> Pearls. You know Sounds how about that right. Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you you had said that like the the goal of volunteering is to eventually like stop. That's that's something I feel like you don't think about all the time when you go like 
You aren't actively thinking, how can I make it so I don't have to do this anymore? You think we would with how lazy we are in general, just being like, how can I stop? But that's just not a thought that people have. That may not have come out as eloquently as I'd planned. I didn't ask a question either, so I'm going to do that now. So uh, you often work with the homeless population, and obviously there's a lot of homelessness in the Puget Sound area. Uh, how do people outside of nursing and being doctors and stuff, how do, what is the best way that you seem to get involved and help out with that? Well, I'm proud of your, your campus. I did notice that uh, upstairs when you enter the building, there's a, a, a bin for collect, collecting items for the Tacoma Rescue Mission. So that is one way, just make sure that you're always donating something. The county, every year, by federal law, has to count those who are homeless. It's a, it's a difficult job, but we get more money from the feds if we have a higher, or an accurate count, let's say. So every year, on, on the last Friday of January, we call it the point in time count. We need volunteers, they come out and train you, they'll come to this campus and train you volunteers who are willing to go out and talk to folks who are experiencing homelessness. That is one thing you can do. You can volunteer, and I've got, I've got this little poster right here. There you go. Yes, yeah, we've got, you, you got two multiples. of them, yes. And before that, you can collect some items, socks, blankets, scarves, hats, bottles of water, anything that, if you can't volunteer that day, the volunteers will have something to give in exchange for somebody to give them your time to talk to you with the survey. So you can collect things here on campus, let me know, I'll come back and pick them up, <laughs> or you can volunteer that day. Uh, so then, so anyone can, can volunteer and it's, they're looking for hats and scarves yes. and things? Yes, and yes, yes. So any one of us could go buy hats and head to the yes. bin that's just right upstairs yes. and donate stuff. Yes. Yeah, so a great way to give back uh, for the holidays, I suppose, it, especially it as we're heading to break and stuff. The cold is gonna stop when we get back, right? <laughs> oh my so. Gosh. You just dump it off. People don't agree with me. That's okay. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota. Um, <laughs> the, so, oh, so I saw that you owned a bronze and granite memorial company. What, uh, what, is the, what is that? I'm third generation tombstone maker. <laughs> so you're, you're a nurse and a tombstone maker. <laughs> yes. When I was 11, it, when I was 11, my uh, dad made me go to work, and I've been working ever since. And he was second generation tombstone maker. We had Tacoma Monumental Works. And so um, I've thought a lot about the dash, you know? The dash, what's the dash? Okay, so you see a tombstone, there's a name, there's a number, mm. there's a dash, and there's a second date. So you're saying like as an 11 year old, you were going out and yes. thinking about that middle number. <laughs> I was, I was, yes. I, I know that there's, there's a dash for everybody, right? There's a beginning and an end, and your life is that dash. Wow. As an 11 year old, make, you were going out and thinking that? I mean, really that. true, yeah. Wow. There's a lot of time, when you're, when you're making a tombstone, and in those days, and this is before we were computerized, we had to actually pick the individual letters and the numbers and the dashes and all that. So you're standing there for hours just, just doing type. Hmm. Setting type. Wow. And I just, off the things that you've done, I think that you've made a pretty impressive dash. It, it seems like you've, there was laughter as if somebody was implying something, but no, <laughs> no. I just, I mean, all the things you've, uh, you've accomplished so many words and you're still going, you're still doing work because you're still, you're still going out and volunteering as well, right? Oh, absolutely. It's, it, you have to have purpose. I think this campus stresses that. You have to have purpose. Every day you have to have something that you need to do, and you need to make this place a better world when you leave. My generation screwed up. I am here to apologize for how we are leaving the environment and the world. I am so sorry. It's up to you to clean it up, knock on wood, <laughs> throw a dead chicken over my shoulder, whatever, whatever it's gonna take. I've, I've to never make heard it. that saying. What does that mean, throw a dead chicken over your shoulder? For good luck. You're, you're from Minnesota. What do you throw over your shoulder from Minnesota? Snow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, so it, 
Is, was that a thing that you would like kill a chicken and throw it over your shoulder? No, and it's, it's a euphemism. Oh, okay. Yes, it's a euphemism. We, we don't have chickens here. Yeah, so no, we have to have purpose. We have to, and, and hopefully in your, for, in your career, academic career here on campus, you find purpose. It was, it was interesting. When, yes, yes. Please give a round of applause. It was, it was very funny when you were talking about purpose on campus. I heard someone inhale sharply like a, because they, they thought you were going to say vocation. <laughs> so I have, uh, I have one last question for you. So what made you decide to become a nurse? You, you are working at the University of Washington doing all these things. Why did you decide to become a nurse? When I was 17, uh, which is about 1,000 years ago, there were only a couple of vocations that were welcoming to women. Education and nursing. Those were the two main things. The only thing I knew is that I didn't want to be dependent on anybody. I wanted to be a full-time professional and be completely independent. And I wanted to get on any boat, any plane, any train, and get off and get a job within the first 24 hours. And an American nursing license, you can go anywhere in the world and get a job tomorrow. So I did it for the adventure. I know that's not the right answer, but I did it for <laughs> the adventure, not the altruism. The, altru the, the sense of seeing folks at their worst, and then hopefully you can, you can make that path a little bit better for them. That came later, the joy of doing that. But the adventure, the sense of adventure and independence is why I did it. Wow. And, and I did it so that eventually I'd be invited on these late night talk shows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that was a great answer. I thought it was a great reason to do it. Thank you so much for coming on yeah. the show.